Diving medicine, also called undersea and hyperbaric medicine UHB, is the diagnosis, treatment and prevention of conditions caused by humans entering the undersea environment. It includes the effects on the body of pressure on gases, the diagnosis and treatment of conditions caused by marine hazards and how relationships of a diver's fitness to dive affect a diver's safety. Hyperbaric medicine is a corollary field associated with diving, since recompression in a hyperbaric chamber is used as a treatment for two of the most significant diving-related illnesses, decompression sickness and arterial gas embolism. Diving medicine deals with medical research on issues of diving, the prevention of diving disorders, treatment of diving accidents and diving fitness. The field includes the effect of breathing gases and their contaminants under high pressure on the human body and the relationship between the state of physical and psychological health of the diver and safety. In diving accidents it is common for multiple disorders to occur together and interact with each other, both causatively and as complications. Diving medicine is a branch of occupational medicine and sports medicine, and an important part of diver education. <laughs> Range and scope of diving medicine The scope of diving medicine must necessarily include conditions that are specifically connected with the activity of diving, and not found in other contexts, but this categorization excludes almost everything, leaving only deep water blackout, isobaric counterdiffusion and high-pressure nervous syndrome. A more useful grouping is conditions that are associated with exposure to variations of ambient pressure. These conditions are largely shared by aviation and space medicine. Further conditions associated with diving and other aquatic and outdoor activities are commonly included in books which are aimed at the diver, rather than the specialist medical practitioner, as they are useful background to diver first aid training. The scope of knowledge necessary for a practitioner of diving medicine includes the medical conditions associated with diving and their treatment, physics and physiology relating to the underwater and pressurized environment, the standard operating procedures and equipment used by divers which can influence the development and management of these conditions, and the specialized equipment used for treatment. <laughs> Scope of knowledge for diving medicine The ECHMEDTC Educational and Training Standards for Diving and Hyperbaric Medicine 2011 specify the following scope of knowledge for diving medicine. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Scope of knowledge for hyperbaric medicine. The ECHMEDTC Educational and Training Standards for Diving and Hyperbaric Medicine 2011 specify the following scope of knowledge for hyperbaric medicine additional to that for diving medicine Physiology and pathology of diving and hyperbaric exposure HBO Basics – Effects of Hyperbaric Oxygen, Physiology and Pathology Clinical HBO Chamber technique multiplace, monoplace, transport chambers, wet recompression Mandatory indications HBO recommended indications HBO experimental and anecdotal indications HBO data collection, statistics, evaluation HBO general basic treatment nursing HBO diagnostic monitoring and therapeutic devices in chambers 
risk assessment, incidence monitoring and safety plan in HBO chambers HBO safety regulations Diagnostics <inaudible> 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 The signs and symptoms of diving disorders may present during a dive, on surfacing, or up to several hours after a dive. Divers have to breathe a gas which is at the same pressure as their surroundings, which can be much greater than on the surface. The ambient pressure underwater increases by one standard atmosphere 100 kilopascals for every 10 meters 33 feet of depth. The principal conditions are decompression illness, which covers decompression sickness and arterial gas embolism, nitrogen narcosis, high pressure nervous syndrome, oxygen toxicity, and pulmonary barotrauma, burst lung. Although some of these may occur in other settings, they are of particular concern during diving activities. The disorders are caused by breathing gas at the high pressures encountered at depth, and divers will often breathe a gas mixture different from air to mitigate these effects. Nitrox, which contains more oxygen and less nitrogen is commonly used as a breathing gas to reduce the risk of decompression sickness at recreational depths up to about 40 meters 130 feet. Helium may be added to reduce the amount of nitrogen and oxygen in the gas mixture when diving deeper, to reduce the effects of narcosis and to avoid the risk of oxygen toxicity. This is complicated at depths beyond about 150 meters 500 feet, because a helium-oxygen mixture helix then causes high-pressure nervous syndrome. More exotic mixtures such as hydraleix, a hydrogen-helium-oxygen mixture, are used at extreme depths to counteract this. Decompression sickness Decompression sickness DCS occurs when gas, which has been breathed under high pressure and dissolved into the body tissues, forms bubbles as the pressure is reduced on ascent from a dive. The results may range from pain in the joints where the bubbles form to blockage of an artery leading to damage to the nervous system, paralysis or death. While bubbles can form anywhere in the body, DCS is most frequently observed in the shoulders, elbows, knees, and ankles. Joint pain occurs in about 90% of DCS cases reported to the U.S. Navy, with neurological symptoms and skin manifestations each present in 10% to 15% of cases. Pulmonary DCS is very rare in divers. Topic: <laughs> Pulmonary barotrauma and arterial gas embolism. If the breathing gas in a diver's lungs cannot freely escape during an ascent, the lungs may be expanded beyond their compliance, and the lung tissues may rupture, causing pulmonary barotrauma PBT. The gas may then enter the arterial circulation producing arterial gas embolism age, with effects similar to severe decompression sickness. Gas bubbles within the arterial circulation can block the supply of blood to any part of the body, including the brain, and can therefore manifest a vast variety of symptoms. <laughs> Nitrogen narcosis Nitrogen narcosis is caused by the pressure of dissolved gas in the body and produces impairment to the nervous system. This results in alteration to thought processes and a decrease in the diver's ability to make judgments or calculations. It can also decrease motor skills, and worsen performance in tasks requiring manual dexterity. 
As depth increases, so does the pressure and hence the severity of the narcosis. The effects may vary widely from individual to individual, and from day to day for the same diver. Because of the perception-altering effects of narcosis, a diver may not be aware of the symptoms, but studies have shown that impairment occurs nevertheless. <laughs> High-pressure nervous syndrome Helium is the least narcotic of all gases, and divers may use breathing mixtures containing a proportion of helium for dives exceeding about 40 meters (130 feet) deep. In the 1960s, it was expected that helium narcosis would begin to become apparent at depths of 300 meters (1,000 feet). However, it was found that different symptoms, such as tremors, occurred at shallower depths around 150 meters (500 feet). This became known as high-pressure nervous syndrome, and its effects are found to result from both the absolute depth and the speed of descent. Although the effects vary from person to person, they are stable and reproducible for the individual. topic oxygen toxicity although oxygen is essential to life in concentrations significantly greater than normal it becomes toxic overcoming the body's natural defenses antioxidants and causing cell death in any part of the body the lungs and brain are particularly affected by high partial pressures of oxygen, such as are encountered in diving. The body can tolerate partial pressures of oxygen around 0.5 bars 50 kilopascals, 7.3 psi indefinitely, and up to 1.4 bars 140 kilopascals, 20 psi for many hours, but higher partial pressures rapidly increase the chance of the most dangerous effect of oxygen toxicity, a convulsion resembling an epileptic seizure. Susceptibility to oxygen toxicity varies dramatically from person to person, and to a smaller extent from day to day for the same diver. Prior to convulsion, several symptoms may be present, most distinctly that of an aura. Treatments <inaudible> 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 Treatment of diving disorders depends on the specific disorder or combination of disorders, but two treatments are commonly associated with first aid and definitive treatment where diving is involved. These are first aid oxygen administration at high concentration, which is seldom contraindicated, and generally recommended as a default option in diving accidents where there is any significant probability of hypoxia, and hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which is the definitive treatment for most incidences of decompression illness. Hyperbaric treatment using other breathing gases is also used for treatment of decompression sickness if HBO is inadequate. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Oxygen therapy. The administration of oxygen as a medical intervention is common in diving medicine, both for first aid and for longer-term treatment. Normobaric oxygen administration at the highest available concentration is frequently used as first aid for any diving injury that may involve inert gas bubble formation in the tissues. There is epidemiological support for its use from a statistical study of cases recorded in a long-term database. <recompression>, Recompression and hyperbaric oxygen therapy 
Recompression treatment in a hyperbaric chamber was initially used as a life-saving tool to treat decompression sickness in Kesson workers and divers who stayed too long at depth and developed decompression sickness. Now, it is a highly specialized treatment modality that has been found to be effective in the treatment of many conditions where the administration of oxygen under pressure has been found to be beneficial. Studies have shown it to be quite effective in some 13 indications approved by the Undersea and Hyperbaric Medical Society. Hyperbaric oxygen treatment is generally preferred when effective, as it is usually a more efficient and lower risk method of reducing symptoms of decompression illness, but in some cases, recompression to pressures where oxygen toxicity is unacceptable may be required to eliminate the bubbles in the tissues in severe cases of decompression illness. <inaudible> Education and registration of practitioners Specialist training in underwater and hyperbaric medicine is available from several institutions, and registration is possible both with professional associations and governmental registries. Education <inaudible> 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 NOAA, UHMS Physicians Training Course in Diving Medicine This course has been presented since 1977, and has been influenced by internationally accepted training objectives recommended by the Diving Medical Advisory Committee, the European Diving Technology Committee, and the European Committee for Hyperbaric Medicine. The course is designed for qualified medical practitioners, but may be useful to others who work in the field of diving safety and operations. The course is to train physicians to recognize and treat diving medical emergencies. Subject matter includes, basic physics and physiology of the hyperbaric environment, the laws and principles, the differences between hyperbaric and hypobaric pressure Hyperbaric gases and their effects under pressure Links between the physiological effects of the hyperbaric environment and the pathology of the disease Basic decompression theory Historical development to current concepts Factors affecting decompression safety including acceptable risks and thermal issues Distinguish decompression sickness from barotrauma and arterial gas embolism Dive computer theories and types, and comparison to dive tables Introduction to commercial diving and comparison to recreational and technical diving, including differences in procedures, equipment, and diver categories The clinical application of hyperbaric oxygen therapy and the treatment tables used Participation in surface supplied diving operation and hyperbaric chamber operations Components, types, operational and safety hazards associated with hyperbaric chambers Diving-related conditions resulting from the effects of long-term effects of diving, flying after diving, altitude, thermal conditions, age and gender Neurologic assessment on a diver with signs and or symptoms of DCI Medical and fitness standards for diving, including Contraindications for both commercial and recreational divers Differences in medical standards for recreational versus occupational diving communities Legal implications for approving and denying fitness to dive in an occupational setting Approaches for determining the safety of prescription and OTC medications used by divers Fellowship in undersea and hyperbaric medicine 
the Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education and the American Osteopathic Association offer 12-month programs in undersea and hyperbaric medicine associated with ACGME or AOA accredited programs in emergency medicine, family medicine, internal medicine, occupational medicine, preventive medicine, or anesthesiology. ECHMEDTC Educational and Training Standards for Physicians in Diving and Hyperbaric Medicine The standard drawn up jointly by the European Committee for Hyperbaric Medicine and the European Diving Technical Committee defines job descriptions for several levels of diving and hyperbaric physician, education and assessment to these standards may be provided by institutions of higher education under the leadership of a level 3 hyperbaric medicine expert as defined below. Certificates of competence may be issued by a nationally accredited institution or an internationally acknowledged agency, and periodic recertification is required. Level 1. Medical Examiner of Divers med minimum 28 teaching hours the MED must be competent to perform the assessments of medical fitness to dive of occupational and recreational divers and compressed air workers, except the assessment of medical fitness to resume diving after major decompression incidents. Level 2D. Diving Medicine Physician DMP minimum 80 teaching hours. A DMP must be competent to perform the initial and all other assessments of medical fitness to dive of working and recreational divers or compressed air workers, and manage diving accidents and advise diving contractors and others on diving medicine and physiology with the backup of a diving medical expert or consultant. A DMP should have knowledge in relevant aspects of occupational health, but is not required to be a certified specialist in occupational medicine. A DMP should have certified skills and basic practical experience in assessment of medical fitness to dive, management of diving accidents, safety planning for professional diving operations, advanced life support, acute trauma care and general wound care. Level 2H Hyperbaric Medicine Physician HMP minimum 120 teaching hours an HMP will be responsible for hyperbaric treatment sessions with the backup of a hyperbaric medicine expert or consultant. An HMP should have appropriate experience in anesthesia and intensive care in order to manage the HBO patients, but is not required to be a certified specialist in anesthesia and intensive care. An HMP must be competent to assess and manage clinical patients for hyperbaric oxygen therapy treatment. Level 3. Hyperbaric medicine expert or consultant hyperbaric and diving medicine is a physician who has been assessed as competent to manage a hyperbaric facility HBO center or the medical and physiological aspects of complex diving activities. Manage research programs on diving medicine. Supervise a team of HBO doctors and personnel, health professionals and others. Teach relevant aspects of hyperbaric medicine and physiology to all members of staff. Gesellschaft für Tausch und Überdruckmedizin e. v. Society for Diving and Hyperbaric Medicine German standards for education and assessment of diving medical practitioners are similar to the ECHMEDTC standards and are controlled by the Gesellschaft für Tausch und Überdruckmedizin e. v. They include medical examiner of divers, diving medicine physician, hyperbaric medicine physician, chief hyperbaric medicine physician and hyperbaric medicine consultant. 
Schweizerische Gesellschaft für Unterwasser und Hyperbarmedizin Swiss Society for Underwater and Hyperbaric Medicine Swiss standards for education and assessment of diving medical practitioners are controlled by the Schweizerische Gesellschaft für Unterwasser und Hyperbarmedizin. They include medical examiner of divers, diving medicine physician and hyperbaric medicine physician. Österreichische Gesellschaft für Tausch und Hyperbarmedizin Austrian Society for Diving and Hyperbaric Medicine Austrian Standards for Education and Assessment of Diving Medical Practitioners are controlled by the Österreichische Gesellschaft für Tausch und Hyperbarmedizin They include Medical Examiner of Divers, Diving Medicine Physician, Hyperbaric Medicine Physician, Chief Hyperbaric Medicine Physician and Hyperbaric Medicine Consultant. Topic Registration The American Medical Association recognizes the sub speciality under sea and hyperbaric medicine held by someone who is already board certified in some other speciality. The South African Department of Labor registers two levels of diving medical practitioner. Level 1 is qualified to conduct annual examinations and certification of medical fitness to dive, on commercial divers equivalent to ECHMEDTC Level 1. Medical examiner of divers, and Level 2 is qualified to provide medical advice to a diving contractor and hyperbaric treatment for diving injuries equivalent to ECHMEDTC Level 2D Diving Medicine Physician Australia has a four-tier system, in 2007 there was no recognised equivalence with the European standard. GPs completing the first tier 4 to 5 day course on how to examine divers for fitness to dive can then add their names to the SPUMS diving doctors list GPs completing the second tier 2 week diving medicine courses provided by the Royal Australian Navy and the Royal Adelaide Hospital or the 2 week course in diving and hyperbaric medicine provided by the ANZ Hyperbaric Medicine Group qualify to do commercial diving medicals The third tier is the SPUMS diploma in diving and hyperbaric medicine the candidate must attend a two-week course, write a dissertation related to DHM and have the equivalent of six months full-time experience working in a hyperbaric medicine unit. The fourth tier is the Certificate in Diving and Hyperbaric Medicine from the ANZ College of Anesthetists. Training of divers and support staff in relevant first aid Divers <inaudible> 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 A basic knowledge understanding of the causes, symptoms and first aid treatment of diving-related disorders is part of the basic training for most recreational and professional divers, both to help the diver avoid the disorders, and to allow appropriate action in case of an incident resulting in injury. Recreational divers. A recreational diver has the same duty of care to other divers as any ordinary member of the public, and therefore there is no obligation to train recreational divers in first aid or other medical skills. 
Nevertheless, first aid is training is recommended by most, if not all, recreational diver training agencies, recreational diving instructors and dive masters, on the other hand, are to a greater or lesser extent responsible for the safety of divers under their guidance, and therefore are generally required to be trained and certified to some level of rescue and first aid competence, as defined in the relevant training standards of the certifying body. In many cases this includes certification in cardiopulmonary resuscitation and oxygen administration for diving accidents. <laughs> <laughs> Professional divers Professional divers usually operate as members of a team with a duty of care for other members of the team. Divers are expected to act as standby divers for other members of the team and the duties of a standby diver include rescue attempts if the working diver gets into difficulties. Consequently, professional divers are generally required to be trained in rescue procedures appropriate to the modes of diving they are certified in, and to administer first aid in emergencies. The specific training, competence and registration for these skills varies, and may be specified by state or national legislation or by industry codes of practice. Diving supervisors have a similar duty of care, and as they are responsible for operational planning and safety, generally are also expected to manage emergency procedures, including the first aid that may be required. The level of first aid training, competence and certification will generally take this into account. In South Africa, registered commercial and scientific divers must hold current certification in first aid at the national level 1, with additional training in oxygen administration for diving accidents, and registered diving supervisors must hold level 2 first aid certification. Offshore diving contractors frequently follow the IMCA recommendations. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Diver medic. A diver medic or diving medical technician (DMT) is a member of a dive team who is trained in advanced first aid. A diver medic recognized by IMCA must be capable of administering first aid and emergency treatment, and carrying out the directions of a doctor pending the arrival of more skilled medical aid, and therefore must be able to effectively communicate with a doctor who is not on site, and be familiar with diving procedures and compression chamber operation. The diver medic must also be able to assist the diving supervisor with decompression procedures provide advice as to when more specialized medical help should be requested, and must be fit to provide treatment in a hyperbaric chamber in an emergency, and must therefore hold a valid certificate of medical fitness to dive. Training standards for diver medic are described in the IMCA scheme for recognition of diver medic training. Training. Topic: Ethical and medico-legal issues. Topic: History of diving medical research. Topic. Timeline November 1992 – The first examination for certification in undersea medicine by the American Board of Preventive Medicine. November 1999 – The first examination for undersea and hyperbaric medicine qualification. Notable researchers <laughs> 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 
Topic: Research organizations. Defense and Civil Institute of Environmental Medicine DCIEM is a combined military and civilian research organization to research the operational needs of the Canadian Forces in All Environments, Divers Alert Network The Divers Alert Network is an international non-profit organization with regional branches supported by donations, grants, and membership dues, for assisting divers in need. The DAN Research Department conducts significant medical research on recreational scuba diving safety, and the DAN Medicine Department provides support for divers worldwide to find answers to the diving medical questions. Diving Diseases Research Center the Diving Diseases Research Centre (DDRC) is a British hyperbaric medical organisation located near Derryford Hospital in Plymouth, Devon. It is a registered charity and was established in 1980 to research the effects of diving on human physiology. The main objective of DDRC is research into diving medicine. The centre is also an education and training base providing diving medical, clinical and hyperbaric courses. Diving Medical Advisory Committee DMAC is an independent committee with the purpose of providing advice about medical and safety aspects of commercial diving. They publish guidance notes about various aspects of diving and diving medical practice, and run a scheme for approval of courses in diving medicine. European Committee for Hyperbaric Medicine The ECHM is an organization to study and define indications for hyperbaric therapy, research and therapy protocols, standards for therapeutic and technical procedures, equipment and personnel, and related cost-benefit and cost-effectiveness criteria. It is a representative body with the European Health Authorities, and works toward cooperation among scientific organizations involved in the field of diving and hyperbaric medicine. Membership of the committee includes doctors practicing diving medicine in Northern Europe, representatives of relevant health authorities, medical representatives from relevant navies, and a diving safety officer nominated by the International Marine Contractors Association. European Underwater and Baromedical Society the European Underwater and Baromedical Society is a primary source of information for diving and hyperbaric medicine physiology worldwide. The organization was initially formed as the European Underwater and Biomedical Society in 1971, National Board of Diving and Hyperbaric Medical Technology, the National Board of Diving and Hyperbaric Medical Technology NBDHMT, formerly known as the National Association of Diving Technicians, is a non-profit organization for the education and certification of qualified personnel in the fields of diving and hyperbaric medicine in the U.S. The Diver Medic Technician DMT program is designed to meet the specific medical care needs of commercial, professional and scientific divers that often work in geographic isolation. DMTs are specifically trained for the various diving hazards found at remote work sites. The curriculum covers a wide range of topics from barotrauma to treatment of decompression sickness. The Certified Hyperbaric Technologist CHT program is tailored to meet the specific safety and operational needs for biomedical devices within the department, and the necessary knowledge and skills to administer clinical treatment. The curriculum covers a wide range of topics including hyperbaric chamber operations to transcutaneous oxygen monitoring. 
The Certified Hyperbaric Registered Nurse program is a subspecialty for registered nurses, sometimes referred to as baromedical nurses. Southern African Undersea and Hyperbaric Medical Association SAUHMA is a voluntary association recognized as a special interest group by the Group Council of the South African Medical Association. South Pacific Underwater Medicine Society The South Pacific Underwater Medicine Society is a primary source of information for diving and hyperbaric medicine physiology worldwide. The organization supports the study of all aspects of underwater and hyperbaric medicine, provides information on underwater and hyperbaric medicine, publishes a medical journal and holds an annual conference. SPUMS offers a postgraduate diploma of diving and hyperbaric medicine. Undersea and Hyperbaric Medical Society the Undersea and Hyperbaric Medical Society UHMS, is a primary source of information for diving and hyperbaric medicine physiology worldwide. See also George F. Bond, U.S. Navy Physician and Diving Medicine and Saturation Diving Researcher Rubicon Foundation, non-profit organization for promoting research and information access for underwater diving Undersea and Hyperbaric Medical Society, U.S.-based organization for research and education in hyperbaric physiology and medicine